Frozen shoulder is a very common shoulder condition that we see at integrated orthopedics. Uh, one of the very common, most common things that people complain of is loss of motion. And in a frozen shoulder, what that is, is losing motion in all planes, forward, to the side, and, and behind. So for example, women will often complain that they're unable to um, uh, button their bra straps, and oftentimes uh, uh, men cannot reach in their back pocket to grab their wallet or, or, or their belt loop. Um, so we see it very commonly and what's really going on in the shoulder uh, is an infl inflammatory process. So the symptoms of a frozen shoulder, initially it's pain. So people will come in, if somebody comes in very early, you can't necessarily say that they have a frozen shoulder because it may look like possibly like rotator cuff tendonitis or one of the other shoulder conditions that we might see. However, what happens is over time that people begin to lose their motion and then you can really begin to identify and, and truly diagnose uh, frozen shoulder. Some of the classic patients that we see with frozen shoulder are uh, women in their 40s who are diabetic. It's a very classic um, um, a group. Oftentimes trauma can predispose someone to a frozen shoulder. So for example, you could fall, hit your shoulder, and have some shoulder pain for the next couple of weeks and think that you're okay, and then that shoulder starts, starts to tighten up over the following, say, four to six weeks. And that's a very classic scenario that we'll see and somebody will come in with a frozen shoulder. Specifically, then if you add on, if, they're, you, you know, if you're diabetic uh, or maybe had a history of frozen shoulder, that really ups the uh, percentage that you could have a frozen shoulder. We don't know exactly what causes frozen shoulder, but we do. There are some hormonal things with the thyroid. Diabetes, as I said, uh, is also often a, a very a common uh, a reason. But we do know what happens in this situation of a frozen shoulder. And it's kind of interesting where the, the frozen shoulder is a, basically a two-year history. So say you lived in a, a third world country or a place where or you just you know, n neglected your shoulder or just refused treatment. Um, it's a two-year span where you can go from actually a, a, a shoulder that's a frozen shoulder uh, at you know, uh, time zero and then two years go through the process of losing your motion, painful shoulder, and then at two years you can actually have a fairly normal shoulder. Uh, in the United States most people don't choose to do that in that it's quite a, a, uh, quite a painful process. Uh, so most people will come in and, and elect to have some treatment. Initially you have the pain stage, so that where the shoulder just hurts uh, and then you have a stage we call freezing, so that's when you start to lose your motion. And it can get fairly dramatic where you can really lose a lot of motion and it be can become quite uncomfortable. Uh, and then the third stage is the thawing stage, so that's when you actually begin to have uh, improvement in your range of motion. So we talked about that two-year history or two-year span, if you will, of a frozen shoulder. And the thaw so the thawing phase is sort of begins to be, be at the end of that two-year phase. The x-ray is important to, do, to take and that we can look and make sure that the joint uh, is, is, is normal or, or we know what's going on from that standpoint. The frozen shoulder, seeing that early, what we're able to do is, 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 is steroid injection. So what we do is do an intraarticular or a shot of, of medication steroid into the joint itself. And it really needs to be in the right spot, and that's why we use ultrasound for this shot, because it's very important that the steroid or the medication goes right into the joint uh, where the problem, problem lies. The injection therapy is quite, quite beneficial, so what we'll do is we'll do the injection or ultrasound, and then we'll typically send folks for some formal physical therapy. Oftentimes they're very, very tight, and, and really uh, with the steroid shot alone, people will have a very difficult time on their own getting their motion back. However, the nice thing about getting into therapy after the injection is the therapy is more manageable from a pain standpoint and the therapist are, are more, um, it's, it's helpful for the therapist because they can kind of get more out of your sessions because they're able to stretch the patient um, uh, um, and the patient's able to better tolerate the stretching. So typically what I'll do is I'll see patients back, I'll do an injection, I'll do an injection. we'll see them back in a month and, and, and then they're basically showing off what they can do and it's, it's exciting for them because they come in and they may only be able to lift their arm up you know, 120 degrees and they're coming in and they have full forward flexion of their shoulder for example and they're, they're pretty excited about that and they're happy with that. 
You know, it's, it's definitely possible. You do see people that recur, you know, have a second bout of frozen shoulder. Uh, and those are, are, are people that oftentimes will come back in earlier to, you know, have treatment performed. We also see it sometimes on the opposite side. So they'll have a frozen shoulder on the left side, which is treated successfully, and then they'll come in and they'll get a frozen shoulder, they'll have a frozen shoulder uh, on their right side. Most people do have a full recovery, and I think we're real, as in orthopedics, we're very successful in managing and treating a frozen shoulder. Some of the common questions that I see are, do I need an MRI? Because most people come in and they're really uh, symptomatic and, and they find it unbelievable that they couldn't have, you know, a rotator cuff tear or something going on. And oftentimes, or most of the time, they don't have an MRI to start with, and I don't order one. I get the plain x-rays, we do the injection, we do the physical therapy, and we're very successful with that. If somebody comes back in the clinic with another frozen shoulder, I will obtain an MRI at that point to make sure that maybe there's, you know, there's not an underlying situation such as a, a small rotator cuff tear or something that may be uh, stimulating the shoulder, if you will, to uh, uh, become frozen. From a surgical standpoint, uh, from a frozen shoulder are people who either don't get better. So say you do the injection, you do physical therapy, and you continue to struggle. So you're continuing to have motion issues. You know, that patient's a surgical candidate. Um, often, or if you've recurred. So say somebody has spent three or four months recovering from a frozen shoulder, and then they may have a month or two where they're fairly symptom free, and then the shoulder uh, stiffness begins to recur. Oftentimes those patients are very frustrated and they're interested in uh, you know, surgical intervention because they don't wanna sort of dedicate another period of their life to treatment that has failed before. Uh, it's called a, a 360 capsule release. So the patient um, uh, does go to sleep for the surgery and then we place the arthroscope in, into the joint and the pathology behind the frozen shoulder is one where there's a capsule that surrounds the joint. In every joint that we have in the body, there's a capsule. So the joint wrist, elbow, ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder. So uh, any joint, so there's only so much fluid you could put in a joint, for example. So if I'm gonna inject fluid into your, say, shoulder, I may only be able to put 10 cc's in there. Uh, and what stops that from, from um, expanding more is the capsule, so the capsule in frozen shoulder is the pathologic structure. So what the capsule is like in the frozen shoulder is it, I, I liken it to like a, a normal, say a, a normal eye versus a bloodshot eye. When we go into a, a regular shoulder without capsulitis, the, the, the capsular structures are, are, are white, they glisten, they're perfect, if you will. In a frozen shoulder, the capsular structures become uh, where it almost looks like a bloodshot eye. It looks very angry, there's vessels, it bleeds easily. So that's the structure that actually tightens down in a frozen shoulder. So when we go into a surgical setting, what we're doing is we're cutting the capsule, which therefore allows patient's motion. So what we'll do is we'll get in the shoulder, we'll do a 360 capsule release, so meaning we'll cut around the entire capsule, which is safe to do. You're not removing it, you're just cutting it to allow more room and then we manipulate the shoulder. So then we take the shoulder through the appropriate motions while the patient's asleep. So we get them all the way up, we get them all the way to the side, we get them all the way back. And then what we do uh, is we get patients into therapy very early. So some patients will even start therapy that day. They'll have a, a block in the, in, in the uh, arm so that they won't feel any discomfort so they'll see their therapist that day or we'll start them the, the next day in, at the, uh, uh, that'd be the, the, uh, uh, another uh, appropriate treatment form. The frozen shoulder surgery is very successful. We're, uh, we don't do that many of them because most people get better with uh, a, a therapy and the injection, but when done, um, we're very successful with that.